Hey everyone, it's Joe from The Automator, and this is another episode of What We Automated This Week with Auto Hotkey, and another another big client week of consulting, so we don't have as many scripts, uh, but the guys did focus on some cool tools, and I think I can at least demo one of them here, so let's see, tools, this is Prompt Assistant, by the way, really cool tool for launching things, you're doing hot strings, it's, it's this tool now, we wrote this, uh, it's in a video on it if you want to find that, for finding files that were recently edited, Um here again at the start, we have client work for a couple of different people. Um, there we go. So these are our, our uh, the top ones are for our radiologist, one of the guys we're helping a lot. And radiologists work really hard, but they have some really crappy tools they work with that aren't easily automated. And so we're working with uh, Danny here to help him work smarter, not harder. And uh, that's going really well. He's liking all the stuff we came up with. We also had a call, was it in here? No, I, oh yeah, with Michael. Uh, we demonstrated, he was like, well, I have a list of things that after we sign off on it, I have to say they're not any of these. And he was thinking up an idea of how to do it. Um, and he was using hot strings. So I'm like, hey, we could create a list, a GUI list where it would be like select all or select none, or you can check them. And that way you can pick and choose because he, he probably wants um, eight out of the 10 or you know five out of the eight or whatever. So we made him a nice simple tool as a demo because it was just a, a let us show you what we've automated lately with him. And uh, he really liked that. So that was that one. Um, toggling notification. So that was one. It's still not done. I'll have to work on it. But uh, last week I tried using it and, and, and I didn't turn it on this time either. But I was disabling notifications during my recordings. And so we have a hotkey that does it, but it didn't quite work. This blur tool, that's really cool. We got a video on that. Um, I think we made a couple minor tweaks to that. Uh, this MP3 ripper, we noticed, now this one we haven't released yet, but it it's really cool. I noticed I had some music that were all FLAC so, um, formats, which is an audio lossless format. And um, even though it says MP3 ripper, it, um, it's really for ripping videos and in, into MP3 format, but I wanted MP3 format for my audio player, which I'll try to remember to put the link up here for that. It's really cool. It's very handy, but it plays, um, it plays most file formats, mostly MP3s. And I realized this MP3 ripper, I just added the FLAC extension to it. And then I was able to convert all the FLAC files to MP3 files. So um, that was a nice, cool, quick one. This quick raw edit, let me show you. Let me launch that one. That's one Rizwan has been working on. Let's see how it looks. My DPI is higher on this screen, so I'm not sure how it's going to render. Oh, well, that looks all right. So you can drag a video on there. Let me grab a video. And then you can, I could like move it up some. I can watch the video and play it, but I'm not going to do that. I can hit split start. Now that's been set. Now my my buttons, my um, up and down buttons and scroll bars are wider. I did that so our tool doesn't actually look like that. It's only going to look like that on my computer, not on, on yours. Uh, but you can hit the split start, add the split end. And now this would give me a 12 minute. Let's let's change this one. Let's go a little shorter. So it's a seven and a half minute video. Um, my file. And when I hit cut video, it is going to go. It, it's already done, right? It uses FFmpeg and it extracts that and it, it doesn't have to re-render it. So it's very, very cool. This tool, we're not, it's not out yet, but we'll have it out pretty soon. It'll, it'll probably be another like $5.99 price tag. You do have to have FFmpeg installed, but it's really, really cool. And I also realized, because I, I did an extraction from an audio, like a podcast, uh, an MP3 file, and I realized I can use this thing for audio files as well. So I played it, got to the point where I wanted, hit the split start, played it again, let it go for another, um, I think it was about 10 minutes. I hit end and then I hit my button and instantly had a file I could share with the hero members um, that was on handling, working with, um, you know, people that are negative and, and stupid, <laughs> but, um, which is not something I'm great at. Anyway, um, so yeah, all of these were different stuff we were doing with that. Flexifinder, what I realized, and we're going to have to do a video on it, Flexifinder, it's cool, but the GUI uh, where you can select a hotkey is um, limited because we use the built-in hotkey selector that comes, Not it's not built-in, but there's a function for it out there that's very common. But I use my caps lock and S to trigger it, and I realized that's not in there, and someone else complained. So first, we edited the script where I could just say, hey, I want to set it myself. But what I realized is I could launch, I can use my other script, I can send the hotkey that I identify in Flexifinder, but I can use Caps Lock S, and if I set send level on both scripts, 
I can send that hotkey to that program and have it trigger. So I don't have to build that caps lock S in that tool, which is a much more complicated GUI. I can just set it to any hotkey and then I can hit what I want and basically, you know, transpose it. So it's really cool. Um, GUI tool. I can't wait to show you this one. It's not ready yet because um, irfan has been working on it and we're actually changing how it works because it did so well. But you hear us, you know, our, our intro to GUI's course, we have both in V1 and V2. It's a great course. And don't forget our courses have 200% money back guarantee. But we we constantly see people make videos or they come to us and they used an automation creation tool on like the like built in the site. There's some sort of a GUI builder and it builds. You can drag your buttons on there and it makes, quote unquote, makes a GUI for you. But the GUI static in the coordinates. And when you go to add something, it, it becomes really problematic when you want to move stuff around, which I've never seen someone create a GUI and then not have to change it after. So. Our tool takes that GUI that was created and then you you identify an anchor and you say, okay, this is my anchor. This is the biggest piece or the piece that's most important. Redraw my GUI and it takes all the elements, the controls, and makes them in size and location relative to that main anchor. And it's just beautiful because then you, they're all relative. And so if you add a new button or move it, it's not such a nightmare. So really, really cool tool. Um, Irfan's been doing a great job. He's been coming to us, and then Isaiah and I give a little direction. But um, it's getting to be where it, it's going to be a really, really cool tool to help a lot of people. This GDI Plus, uh, well, we'll we'll get into the example here in a bit, I think, because I'm not sure where it's saved. But I know Irfan was working on that for me. Isaiah's made a couple updates to Prompt Assistant. That was that tool I mentioned at the beginning. Does a lot of stuff. This Regex tester we're working on to help show you where there are hidden keys because uh, not keys but um characters in your editor like the line feed or carriage return um also tabs and spaces uh and, and applying your regex on them so we're building a tool that'll make it a little easier for that well, that's still a quick blur i mentioned that before screen scale i honestly don't know what that is i have no idea what that is which is hilarious um screen scale i don't know um, step away alert. So this one, we made it where I can hit a button. And of course, this is so Airfriend has a version. I have a version. And and soon Isaias and Rizwan will have versions. But I can hit a button and it uses Telegram AP, using an API. The bot posts it saying I've stepped away. Joe has stepped away or Airfriend stepped away. So it's really cool if we're in the middle of something or whatever and I have to step away, I don't have to interrupt people while we're talking on a call. I can hit the button and they know it gets, it's, you know, it's a hot key that just basically triggers it. I use it with my stream deck, which is really cool because I can see it and just press it. But yeah, you can use a hot key or anything you want. Tell us share. I'm pretty sure I should know what that is, but I'm drawing a blank. Tell us share. I don't know. On um, the subtitle search, we really sat to hero members and maybe we could create a download for non-hero members that doesn't include the hero calls. But the problem is it's a static snapshot, but we took our roughly 1,500 videos, and we can also grab it from other channels as well on AutoHotKey, and we put the titles, the tags, the description, and all the subtitles timestamped into this SQL database. And then our GUI tool allows you to search, and it will show you every video where that term is mentioned, and not only that, but you can, um, and it uses the rich text color thing, which is really cool because you can actually see it highlighted like in yellow on where it was set, found. But if you click that, it will jump in YouTube to that timestamp of the video. So it's really cool because I know some of our videos are quite long, right? Let's say we have a webinar of an hour long and we cover different things, but let's say we did some troubleshooting on one certain spot for using a com object on Excel, let's say, um, you could find you could jump right to that point in time on that video, which is really, really cool. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't allow you to do that. So we built the tool. The problem is our extraction is all static. And when we add new videos, it would we would be have to go update that tool. So we're not sure how we're going to distribute the database because it's a local database. We could put it online, but then there's the complexities of having people do API calls to go get it versus... Um, if we give you the file, but then you got to download updates to it. So that's when we're, we're not sure for how we're going to be sharing that one. This Clipster, which it shouldn't be Clipster, which this is where he changed it to this one. But we, um, when I do the newsletter every week, I'll be writing in word to start. And then we convert it to HTML, but I select the URL of the YouTube video. I hit a hotkey. It goes and gets the title, uses the API to get the title. And 
the thumbnail for the unique ID of that. Well, what I asked Irfan to do was to take that thumbnail, download the thumbnail, overlay with GDI the red play button for uh, the YouTube video, and then upload that, which we haven't done this part yet, but upload that to our FTP folder. And that allows us to put in back into the thumbnail into our newsletter. It's going to have the video, but with a red circle to play it, right? Which is just going to make you feel like more like, oh, look, I can play this video. So um, I was listening to a Dan Kennedy uh, seminar from a guy who really knew his stuff on search in this, that. Anyway, he highly recommended that because it, it actually has a big effect. So this is a cool tool we're going to use for that. Um, and GDIP dev. So the, I was still related to that one. So again, not a lot of files uh, this week and what we've worked on 34 as opposed to normally we've been doing double that easily. We were focused more and we did other client work that's not listed here because the client work is actually done on their computer. But I hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching. And we're nearing 10,000 subscribers. So um, probably in this next week, we'll be, I think we're at um, 9,900 and uh, something. We're, we're getting down there. So uh, please subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, it really helps us out. We release videos three times a week and we're by far the largest on a hockey channel. I like to think the best, but um, thanks for watching. Cheers.